Hello grade 11s and welcome to this lesson in the electrostatics topic. In this lesson, we are going to investigate the forces of attraction and repulsion on charged objects. In terms of Newton's third law, Q1 exerts a force on Q2. This force acts in a direction from Q2 towards Q1. Also, Q2 exerts an equal but opposite force on Q1. Coulomb's law is used to calculate the force on each charged object. Coulomb's law states that the electrostatic force between two charges is directly proportional to the product of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between their centers. The following equation is derived from Coulomb's law and can be used to find the force between two charged objects. The equation states that F equals K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. In this equation, F represents the force acting on each of the charged objects, measured in newtons. K is a constant value called Coulomb's constant. This constant has a value of 9 times 10 to the 9 newton meters squared per Coulomb squared. Q1 and Q2 are the magnitudes of the charges on the objects. These charges must be measured in Coulombs. R is the distance between the centers of the charged spheres, and this must be measured in meters. You may recognize the similarity of this equation to the equation for Newton's law of universal gravitation. Newton's law of universal gravitation states that the force of attraction between two objects is directly proportional to the product of the masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between their centers. The equation for Newton's law of universal gravitation is F equals G M1 M2 over D squared. The two equations have a similar form. Both represent the force exerted by either masses or charges on each other. Both of these forces act at a distance by means of either a gravitational or an electrostatic field. Before we substitute values in the Coulomb's law equation, we need to ensure that we use the correct units. Firstly, the charges Q1 and Q2 must be measured in Coulombs. This table shows the conversions that may have to be made to charges before they are used in the equation. For example, 4 microcoulombs would be converted to 4 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs, and 7 picocoulombs would be 7 times 10 to the negative 12 coulombs. If the distance given is not given in meters, it must be converted before substituting it in the equation. Here are examples of conversions of distance that may have to be made. Let us try a question involving a calculation based on the Coulomb's law equation. Calculate the force acting on the two charged objects, one with a charge of minus 3 microcoulombs and the other with a charge of positive 7 microcoulombs position 300 millimeters apart. Q1 and Q2 have opposite charges, so each charge exerts a force of attraction on the other charge, as the free body diagram shows. It is this force F that we are trying to find. Let us first list the known values. Q1 is negative 3 microcoulombs, which converts to negative 3, times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. Q2 is positive 7 microcoulombs, which converts to positive 7 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. The distance between the charges, D, is 300 millimeters, which converts to 0, 0,3 meters. Now we use Coulomb's law equation to solve for F. In the Coulomb's law equation, we substitute only the magnitude of the charges. So the force acting between the two charges is 2,1 newtons. Note that the negative sign is left out in the front of Q1. We also need to determine whether this force is a force of attraction or repulsion. Because the two charges are oppositely charged, this is a force of attraction, since opposite charges attract. In the next example, we need to rearrange the subject of the formula in order to find the distance between the two charged spheres. Two objects, one with a charge of positive 4 nanocoulombs and the other with a charge of positive 6 nanocoulombs, have a force between them of 3,46 times 10 to the negative 6 newtons. Calculate the distance between the centers of the two charges. Q1 is positive 4 nanocoulombs, which converts to 4 times 10 to the negative 9 coulombs. 
Q2 converts to 6 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs. Now substitute these values into the Coulomb's law equation. The question asks us to find the distance between the centers of the charged objects. After substituting the charges on Q1 and Q2 into the equation, we rearrange the equation to get R squared as the subject of the formula. When we do that, R works out to be 0.25 meters. How would we solve the problem if we have three charges in a straight line and we are asked to find the resultant force on one of the charges? We will need to break the question up into parts and find the force between two charges at a time. After that, we find the resultant force on the point charge in question. Let us look at another example. Three point charges are in a straight line, with their charges and distances shown. What is the resultant electrostatic force on Q2 as a result of the other two charges? We need two separate calculations here. We first calculate the electrostatic force between Q1 and Q2. Then we calculate the electrostatic force between Q2 and Q3. Then we calculate the resultant force on Q2 as a result of the forces applied by Q1 and Q3. We use Coulomb's law to calculate the force of Q1 on Q2. We substitute into the equation the charges on Q1 and Q2 and use the distance between Q1 and Q2. The resulting force of 4,05 times 10 to the minus 6 newtons is a force of attraction because opposite charges attract. We again use Coulomb's law to calculate the force of Q3 on Q2. We substitute into the equation the charges on Q2 and Q3 and use the distance between Q2 and Q3. The resulting force of 2,59 times 10 to the minus 6 newtons is also a force of attraction because the objects are oppositely charged. Let us now draw a sketch diagram to show the forces on Q2 as a result of Q1 and Q3. The forces act in opposite directions, so allocate one direction as positive and the other as negative. Now you can go ahead and work out the sum of the forces in order to find the resultant force. We will take right as positive and left as negative. We use this formula to calculate the resultant force and find that the resultant force on Q2 in this example is negative 1,46 times 10 to the minus 6 newtons. We define the negative direction to be towards Q1. This means that the resultant force on Q2 is attractive towards Q1. And that's how to use Coulomb's law when the charges are all in a straight line. You are now ready to move on to a lesson looking at Coulomb's law for charges that are in two dimensions. Goodbye.